Hey guys, in this video you're going to learn how to prepare our environment to install WordPress locally. Um, so I'm going to show you how to install server, how to create a database and how to finally install a proper WordPress. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to start with installing XAMPP, which is a most popular PHP development environment, which consists of, as I said, PHP, um, plus uh, it comes with Maria database and some few more options, uh, which we're not going to talk in this video because they are more advanced and we don't need them for the WordPress. And so uh, as you can see, it's available for actually um, all operating system so it's available for windows linux and as well as os x and um, so mac os mm, i'm gonna do my setup on windows so basically let's download the newest version uh, let's install it as soon as we got it downloaded so let's install uh, this on our pc i'm gonna continue with the installation um, it gives me some warning because of the um, because of my firewalls and, and uh, antiviruses, uh, but I'm just going to continue. Um, so as you can see, it comes with uh, on Apache, which is the, which is a server for uh, PHP. Uh, you can also install uh, Perl support PHP my, my admin, which is a tool web um, uh, user interface for database. Uh, also Tomcat, uh, FileZilla, so uh, FTP server and few more uh, stuff, which you know, we're not going to talk in this video. What we need is actually Apache and MySQL. So I'm just going to continue um, and I'm going to provide uh, a new version because I already have an old one on my computer. So I'm going to set XAMPP new. You can keep it old. So let's uh, let's install it. I'm going to um, untick this one, learn more about Bitnami as I don't want to get some extra stuff installed and let it install. Now, while uh, XAMPP is being installed, I'm going to install the newest WordPress. So I'm going to go to WordPress download and I'm going to go to WordPress.org and I'm going to get the, the newest version. Currently, uh, from, it's 5.7. When you are watching this video, it might be newer version already. So let's download it. Now let's unzip it. So these are our WordPress files and now let's wait till the end of the installation. So, okay, so once installer finish uh, setup, we can click finish and uh, check this one. Do you want to start control panel now? So this is going to open as um, control panel. So this is how the control panel looks like. Um, and as you can see, we have a few options here. What we are interested in is uh, Apache and MySQL. Now, what you have to know is actually that um, uh, our root folder for Apache is located um, in the same place where we installed XAMPP. So in our case, in my case, it's XAMPP-new. In your case, it could be XAMPP, right? I already have the old version here, so that's why I didn't install it here. But if you uh, if if you didn't have it and you installed it under XAMPP, then go to this folder. I'm going to the new version and then search for htdocs. So this is our, uh, our um, root folder. And now if we navigate to localhost in our uh, web browser, you're going to see a dashboard. And this dashboard is nothing um, else like this folder here, right? So now if we create a new folder here, um, calling this um, hello, and inside this folder, we're going to create a new file with PHP. So I'm going to call it index PHP and say echo hello xamp word. Save it and go to localhost slash hello. Then we're gonna see our file working, right? So now our server is working, um, and as you could see, we also started our database. So how can we ac uh, access our database? Navigate to localhost and either go to dashboard, and here you should get um, link to 
phpMyAdmin, you're going to find it here, or you can directly go to localhost slash phpMyAdmin, right, like here. Um, now, this, uh, this is our, our databases, so we have a few databases predefined over here. We want to create a new one for, uh, um, for uh, WordPress. Now, uh, what you have to know about the database is that you have users and the databases and one user can have access to multiple databases and so on. Uh, usually, I think it's a good practice to have like one user per one database, especially for the like testing uh, environment. You could use root, which uh, root user, which has like access to all the databases, but this is not a good um, idea. So I'm going to create a new user. Uh, I'm going I'm to call it, uh, um, let's say WordPress uh, hostname. I'm going to set it to localhost because we want to access this only from, from our machine. Password, I'm going to create one, secret.1, secret.1. Uh, obviously, it's very weak, but I'm using this locally. Uh, and what, um, what I want to also do is I want to create a database with the same name and grant all the privileges and grant all the privileges to the uh, white card username and also here check all because we want our user, this new user WordPress to have all this access to the database. So it's basically this is the admin for the database. So we're going to have a user called WordPress and we're going to have a database called WordPress. So once we have it all, let's click go and you're going to see that you have added a new user and we have this database over here, which is obviously empty right now because we have no tables found in the database. So now our setup is ready. We have database and we have PHP. So the only thing which remains is that we have to install WordPress. So let's get back to our download folder. So uh, this is a file which we downloaded. I'm going to copy paste it here. So what is important is that I will have this new folder called WordPress under htdocs and um, inside it I'm having these files over here uh, WP admin content includes and all these WP you know, files now let's open this so localhost slash WordPress because this is how our folder is is called right so before we had this hello so we were using hello now we're using wordpress and hit enter this gonna open as an installer so first we are about to choose a language now a message that we need database name user and so on we already have it so let's continue so the database name is wordpress username is wordpress as well password is secret.1 um, obviously this is my password you have to use the one which you set um, while creating database here and table prefix you can you can leave it as default uh, so I'm gonna explain you in a second what it does okay so now you see that all the data we provide are correct uh, so installer is ready to actually run when we press this button run the installation you're gonna see this extra screen which will ask us about our titles site titles so let's say my blog or whatsoever obviously that doesn't matter that much because it's a local installation let's create some username so i'm gonna have admin um let's give it some password obviously since we are doing this on the local host this page is not exposed to the net right so we don't need to care that much about the security unless you have a public ip uh, so you can just keep it like this uh, we will confirm use of weak password but if you are doing the same on the production environment don't do it right set very strong password and my mail my domain.com uh, you can set it up to discourage search engines um, it's always wise to do it on a test environment just in case your web page would be exposed to the internet and you wouldn't like your you know google to uh, to f to let to find this page and to list it on the search result now let's hit install wordpress mm, and this will actually run the installation so now if we check tables you're going to see that some of the tables have been created over here uh, and now we are ready to log in so it will redirect us to localhost wordpress wp login let's use admin let's use password and you can set remember me and log in now our wordpress is ready to use and we are ready to start blogging we are ready to start creating new teams and this what we're gonna learn in the next tutorial <music>